If you want news or rumors that appeal, welcome to the dust. If you want news or rumors that appeal, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. Hey, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. Hey, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. I'm your host, Ian Keeper, and this is our live call and talk show all about the Wheel of Time. And tonight we're back on a Watt Wednesday to talk to you about the music of the Wheel of Time. In fact, we're doing something special tonight. It's the chorus, the Wheel of Time chorus. We're live premiering an amazing uh, song, Al Nato, performed by fans, for fans. And I will introduce my guests shortly. We'll talk about that, the work they did. And then, like I said, we'll premiere that. You're going to love it. It's amazing just how much work was put into this and just how much creativity. And then, then we'll come back after the live premiere and talk about the whole process, how it came together. Get some thoughts on maybe maybe another song, the next song that's going to happen. We'll do some polls, as you know we will, and I'm sure by the end of the show we'll talk all about the season two coming up here for the Wheel of Time TV show. And the call lines will be open. You'll be able to call in, ask some questions to my guests. But before we do that, just want to remind you all that next week there will not be a show because I have the great honor of marrying my son next week. So no shows at the, at the Dusty Wheel. Uh, if you want to leave Taylor a tip, feel free. There's a link in the description of this video of how to do that if you don't want to leave it through uh, live chat here. Uh, but yes, I get to marry Taylor next week. It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so <laughs> that'll be uh, the way we get to start off the year, and you're going to get a little break from the Dusty Wheel. So... That being said, everyone, that's the only announcement I had for you. Uh, without further ado, let me welcome to the show my wonderful three guests this evening. Let me welcome Alex, Jojo, and Maurice. How y'all doing? It's awesome to have you here. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh yeah, the double hand. Hi. Thank you, Alex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Now, I know there's probably some fans that are watching right now wondering, like, what's the Wheel of Time chorus? Like, what's about to happen? A chorus of time, if you will. So, Maurice, do you want to explain to everyone what the Chorus of Time is and what they're about to watch? Yeah, so the way this came about was that um, the other Matt, Melchior's King on Twitter, <laughs> posted a video of himself harmonising various parts of El Nato because El Nato was the very first song that got released from the album. Yeah. So we were all a bit like overanalyzing every little detail that came out at that stage. So everybody was super excited and doing some things around this. And when I saw his tweet, I thought it'd be fun if we actually did a couch choir type version of El Nato. Um, so talk to him and then just sort of put the word out on Twitter um, saying who wants to be part of this. Uh, Alyssa Powers and I recorded some videos for people to sing along to, but we asked for any contributions. So we had people saying, oh, hey, I play this instrument. Do you, want, do you want a violin? Do you want a percussionist? Do you want a dancer? Sort of all kinds of things. And we, the philosophy was anyone who wanted to participate could participate. Um, we'd find a way to include it. And we did. Every single contribution we got is included. Um, and also we really wanted to create something that made the music more accessible. So we have translations in Auslan, which is Australian Sign Language, and in ASL, American Sign Language. 
Um, so between that and the dance, uh, we've got a huge visual component to the music. Um, and then on top of that, we also, uh, I seen some of Sarah's raps, Wheel of Time character <laughs> raps, Sarah at Spear Maidens. Um, so I reached out to her and asked if she would do a rap. Um, which he did. Uh, Alex put together what he called a click track for everyone to play along to and rap to. Uh, so that helped everyone stay in time and be in the same key. Uh, and so then we got all those submissions in through YouTube and we ripped all those videos and the audio and Alex put together the audio mix and I put together the video editing um, and then we combined the whole thing. But it really just evolved based on what we got in and wanting to showcase as many people as possible. And also we really went with the theme of the song, which we knew thanks to a translation and we went with Albright Wright's translation of El Naito that it was a lot to do with the White Tower and the Amelin and Swan Sanche. And then when we saw episode six, we could see it was really her theme song. So we put um, in some clips of uh, Sophie Okonedo and Swan into it as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Like as you're talking about it, I was like, oh my gosh, there are all those pieces to it. I have seen it, everyone. It's amazing. You're about to watch it here shortly. Jojo, what part did you play in this? Were you, did, I, I didn't, I'm trying to remember, were, did you sing it? Did you take part in some other way? So I did the American Sign Language um, because when Maurice's call went out asking for people to participate I really wanted to participate but uh I don't sing uh <laughs> so um but I uh studied American Sign Language in college for a while so. that's very cool yeah no that's she, yeah go ahead Marie. Yeah. I was gonna say the sign language translations are amazing and it's amazing to see two different ones I know that the Ozland translator is actually my girlfriend, Pam. Uh, so she talked to me a bit about her process. And I know, for example, that when it came to Amelin, obviously there's no sign for Amelin. So she translated that as magic boss lady. I'm not <laughs> sure what Jojo's translations were and how That's you handled amazing. some of those words. I, I got around using the word Amelin as much as possible. I was like, there's this person. We are referring to this person. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. I love that. I, I didn't realize, honestly, I, I was, that was one of the things I was curious about when I saw it. So you'll all see this here shortly. That was one of the questions I had. So, so thank you for kind of clarifying that. Alex, uh, it sounds like you obviously put a lot of this, uh, you took part in putting the music together. Uh, I think I saw that you were, at, you, I think you're playing guitar at some point. What other, what other pieces of this did you actually take part in? Um, so my story with this starts I say recently, it was in 2020, which feels recently. <laughs> um, I, I got my bachelor's in music. I thought, you know, what what better way than just to transcribe the entire album? <laughs> um, so I was doing that on Twitter, and I think uh, Malchius King sent me a message asking if I would get involved, and I offered to mix it and master it and add some other musical elements. So yeah, guitar and bass and a few other stuff. Yeah, yeah and, and Lauren has definitely appreciated a lot of the stuff you've posted on Twitter. <laughs> I've seen a lot of those tweets. Uh, uh, so yeah, I, okay, everybody, we don't, we're not going to make you wait any longer. I'm seeing people get really excited about this in chat. Just wanted to give everyone a chance to join us here. Like I said, we're about to watch the chorus of time uh, to Al Nato, and then we're going to talk with these fine people afterwards about how it all came together, what they think about the music in general for the show. Uh, and like I said, we'll open the call lines after we come back after this premiere. So I'm gonna remind my guests, if you wanna mute yourselves and we will uh, we'll get this started. Enjoy everyone, this is wonderful.
So yeah, amazing. <laughs> you guys are amazing. I'm watching the comments the entire time and uh, just so many people just shocked, um, I think, by everything they just saw. So I kind of want to like talk about this now. Like where did the idea of, for example, like just a graphical presentation, the windows in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the White Tower and you have like channeling going on, like whose brainchild were these? Uh, they were my brain child, were <laughs> brain they? children. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, look, I was just trying to work out how to put it together. I don't have any experience really with video editing. Uh, so I was just Googling how to use Final Cut Pro and <laughs> trying to put that together. Uh, but with the theme, I thought, oh, well, that's a fairly easy way. I can put people in windows. So I just created the windows The the main decorative window that you'd recognize was taken from a still of the trailer and I edited Moraine out of it and then um, put Christine into it slightly imperfectly, but, you know, it basically worked. Um, and then took clips literally with my phone filming my TV of the towers and things because I couldn't work out how to take it directly <laughs> off Amazon. Um but yeah, no, so put that together that way. I really wanted to do the weaves and I spent ages thinking about how to do it. I uh, ended up using clips of slow motion water and then sort of cutting them out and processing them. And uh, it worked well for the first bit. And then I was like, oh, how can I take it up a notch? So I thought I'd give us the colours that we all kind of secretly wanted, I think, in the show and never quite got. Uh, so I thought I'd throw those in there. Um, yeah, yeah, the colors, so that's, the colors that's are awesome. 
Yeah, the colors are awesome. Jojo, what's your favorite part, like watching it, having participated in it? Obviously, you do an amazing job. Did you have a favorite aspect of what was put together here? Um, I really loved uh, the the choice with the putting everybody in windows. Uh, that was not at all, like I, not at all what I expected. And I really liked that. Um, my favorite part overall of doing it was um, was the wrap portion. Yeah. Um, and like getting to translate that was a lot of fun. And I've listened to it so many times doing that, that like, I'll just be walking around my house or doing dishes and be like, <laughs> <laughs> that is a, yeah, the rap, it, what's funny is it just comes out of nowhere and, but it just absolutely fits. It's so awesome. <laughs> it's such, I saw so much love for Sarah's rap there, uh, in, in the chat here with us. So by the way, if you're just tuning in and you just missed this premiere, we did, of the course of time, we'll do. We'll actually show it again tonight. There is a, going to be a link here that we'll, we can throw in chat that I'm sure Maurice can put up on social media, um, and you can actually go and just get the you know just watch this by itself outside of this. But we wanted to premiere it here, bring it to the fans so everybody can see it. But yes, please do when we post that link, please go share it. Or, you know, with fans, let them see this. It's just an amazing, amazing amount of work that was put into this. It's so much creativity. Uh, Alex, for you, what, what ended up being kind of your favorite part of this whole presentation? Uh, by the way, it turned out, I love how the outro selection came about. Um, if you analyze the, the original track on the album, the, the waveform, it, it's, it's so inventive how it's in, in volume and dynamics, it's a straight line upwards through each verse, and that continues throughout the second verse as well, and the outro being the final verse is is kind of tapers off and dynamically that's so interesting so i i really like tried to get that on, on this version i think it worked really well yeah yeah it it was it was amazing amazing um uh, I, I by the way i did i had this poll out there i want to do some other polls about what we just saw here so i'll, I'll end this poll how excited are you for season two of the wheel of time people are 45 percent can't stop thinking about it and 47 percent looking forward to it and a nine percent of you were like meh so let me end that poll here. Uh, so I'm kind of curious for the three of you, like uh, why this particular song, I know you'd mentioned obviously it's the first song, but is there some kind of attachment you have to this one? Is this one of your favorite songs or was it just that this is the one that you, we had initially and so we just went with that? I, I think it really suits the style of having, of of being a chorus, of having um, a collective of people playing it. There's, um, and the original track, there's there's so many vocal layers, there's like gang vocals. I think it suits it really well to do it in this format. Yeah, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this uh, question for you, Alex. How many instruments do you play, uh, Dana was wondering in chat? Uh, I, I don't know, too many. <laughs> this... Too many. <laughs> I think... Like 30, maybe? 30, there you go, for Dana out there. Now, I saw that even the way the Heron <laughs> gentleman got part of this, like you said, Maurice, you were like, however you want to be uh, part of this, did you invite them to do that, or did they send that? Like, this is what we came up with when we saw them kind uh, of almost like directing music with their swords. I think, so I think um, Matt from Melky's King uh, was in touch with a few people, including Way of the Heron, because he said, oh, they've just got their Halloween costumes and one of them reckons his looks like Randall Thor was meant to be a pirate or something. So they were wondering if you'd like some sword conducting. Uh, I was like, sure, send it in. So um, that's that's how we got uh, their contribution. <laughs> that's, I, um, that, actually, it was yeah. in, interesting. No, um, we didn't initially have that percussion break. Uh, it was all. It's sort of really evolved as we went along. But when Alex sent me a rough version halfway through, it didn't have all the tracks layered in it. And some one part of it just had the percussion. And the percussionist did such an awesome job. There were three of them that they collaborated together on a Zoom call and worked out what they were going to do and uh, sent all that direct to Alex. Uh, and it sounds so fantastic. We wanted a bit where we just you could just hear them really well. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a yeah. It's it all kind of goes together, and I, I love I love the break the the break that you'd have in the middle of it. It's uh, fantastic. But I did, I did like this comment from just somebody's opinion. I can't even name thirty instruments. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I 
I think I would struggle to name 30 at this point. I, I, I agree with that comment uh, very much so. Um, and uh, Wild Gardenia, thank you very much. I don't want to miss this. Uh, I will make sure that Taylor gets that. Congratulations, Taylor. Dance with her and she'll forgive much. Dance well and she'll forgive anything. Matt Koth and Lord of Chaos. Um, this is a good moment for me to say, like my wife just laughed at me. I'm officiating my son's marriage. Hopefully you all understood that when I said I'm marrying my son. <laughs> I thought that was, you know, but I, I thought I'd throw that out there. Yes, I'm officiating his wedding next week. Uh, so thank you very much, Wild Gardenia. I'll, like I said, I'll make sure that Taylor sees that. Um, now you have this, uh, you actually have the interpretive dance portion of this too. Was that an early part or did that come in kind of at the end? How did the interpretive dance uh, become part of this? Uh, so Christine Burgett, who does the dance, uh, contacted us and just said, oh, here's a dance submission. Um, so we didn't specifically seek out a dance. That was her initiative. Um, yeah. And I don't know whether she's in the chat because I actually can't see the chat on my iPad. But if she is around, we'd love to hear from her about how she came up with that. Um, it looked so amazing that yeah. I wanted to really feature it. Uh, so that's that's how that ha happened. Yeah, it anchors it really well. Uh, absolutely. By the way, this is, so everyone knows, this is a live call and talk show. If you are out there watching and you want to call in and comment about what you just saw, you want to ask some questions about how this came together, you know, you have a question for any of my uh, wonderful guests this evening, you can give us a call at 1-313-825-5968. We'll start talking about the show at, you know, as we get closer to the end of tonight in our discussion. So, but it, it obviously do call in if you would like to talk about this or the work they're doing. Jojo, is there another kind of favorite song on the album that you would want to, uh, you know, sign for again if, we, if you guys did this again? I mean, not, uh, so the thing I really liked about starting with Al Nato is it has some of the most um, like pronounced lyrics of of the soundtrack, but I think another one I would like to do is probably Mashiara. Um, yeah, and work on uh, interpreting those lyrics. Yeah, uh, Mashiara is one of my favorites, that's for sure. Is that is that kind of a, a favorite? Is If I asked you what your favorite song is that Lauren and uh, everyone put together, is it Mashiara or is it something else on the album? I think El Nato is probably number one and Mashiara is number two. Okay. Is that how it is it for you, Alex? Are you, what's your kind of next favorite song if El Nato isn't your top one or is your top one? Well, the thing, um, the thing is like, whichever song I just heard from the album, kind of becomes my favorite because I think they're also good. Um, Mashi Thamel is probably my favorite overall. Um, yeah, it's... In I terms guess. of which I think would, would be good to to do it in this format again for a cover. Um, well, first it would be we would need to have the lyrics, but but also um, uh, Mashi Thamel would be good, but also, as you said, Mashi Ara would be, would be great. Is that true that we haven't, have we not interpreted the lyrics for anything else but Al Nato? I thought we have, do we not have them interpreted for anything else at this point? We have Kaisen Shah and okay. Al Dival, the White Cloaks theme. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure we have the Trollocs one as well. That would be interesting. Okay, the, yeah, we should do the, yeah, I want to, I want everyone to do the Trollocs one and like everyone has to- Someone you, suggested you, to do that for Halloween. That would be great. Uh, that would be great. Okay, Maurice, what do you think? You have plenty of time to continue learning how to edit video and you can give <laughs> us some good, some good Trolloc mix into it. <laughs> I, I'm sure we could do something. Uh, yeah, I, maybe I need to upgrade my computer. I spend a lot of time here, like rendering off several videos at a time, reloading it as one video, like just, so my computer didn't completely time out. So <laughs> maybe we can get someone like um, Lauren, who's really talented, obviously has really good skills to do the next one. Okay, yeah. Lauren, if you're out there, I'm driving the pattern. You heard it, like you've seen this and uh, you know, Maurice is asking Take for it up a notch. next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you did a fantastic job. Uh, I like this comment from Pros Dragon said, Maurice can't see chat. Someone tell her I love her. So proud of you guys. There you go. <laughs> that was love very, you too, babe. Very kind. Uh, uh, and so I, I do see that, that we have a caller coming in here. So, I, But I do want to ask kind of 
you know, is this something that you do plan on doing again, Maurice? Is this uh, like immediately after you got done or you were like, uh, maybe let somebody else take on this next one? <laughs> I look, I'm very happy to hand over. I, I never thought I would actually end up video editing. It was like this really sort of spontaneous thing that got quite out of control and probably did consume a very large part of the last two months. Um, between that and watching the show, I'm not sure like whether I strictly did as much work as I was supposed to be doing. Um, but, uh, I, I really hope that if, if we don't do one, that someone else comes along and does some things like this because it was wonderful, the response we got. And I think there are so many people involved in this that perhaps weren't as big um, in terms of creating things, probably wouldn't have done something by themselves, but really enjoyed being part of this. So that was really nice to see. I mean, do you want to, can you give us a kind of an idea? I know we've mentioned, obviously we saw uh, everyone involved, but how many fans actually sent in something and participated in it? Because we were switching between the windows and I couldn't tell uh, you know, total, how many actually were there? There's a full list at the end. I didn't actually count them. I think we had over 40 submissions, but some people nice. sent in like multiple instruments or singing multiple parts. Um, so I'm guessing there are about, were there about 30 people maybe involved in the end? Um, what do you reckon, Alex? Yeah, Alex, do you know how many were total? I'm just kind of curious. Oh, Sorry, sorry. I, oh, how many, cut how out many total? Second. Oh, sorry. How many total uh, uh, fans participated? Do you remember? It was like between thirty and forty, maybe. Yeah. The, in terms of visualizing it, there's that screenshot folder I sent you. I think the the ones that say uh, Vox Stem Overview and Instruments Overview. I think that gotcha. that can. Yep. This one right here. Might be able to show the. Do you see that? Is that the yeah. one you're talking about here? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so the, those people, are all the vocals, all the essentially. Okay. Yeah. So these are all the vocal parts. Gotcha. I know you sent some other images. Um, what are some of these others uh, that might be interesting to people that are watching right now? Uh, maybe that final mix overview? Is that yeah. Is the show? Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are, we, what are we seeing here? And also um, the, the ones with the instruments for, for anyone who played the instruments that's that's watching um in terms of the final mix um kind of the the, the reason i suggested to show that the the vocals one is because just to save up on cpu um i bounced down um and exported a lot of the uh, vocal tracks uh, collectively into one track so a lot of those tracks you can see there on that final on that screenshot there um those are all like 20 vocal tracks of 20 people singing at the same time so so there's there's tons of people involved yeah. in this yeah it was it's just a, yeah so much fun uh, i know we have a caller let me bring them into the show and see what they have to say let's see who it is uh welcome to the dusty wheel who's this hey man this is joel joel how you doing man i'm doing great Hey, I, I wanted to say first, uh, congratulations to Taylor. Um, oh, yeah. But what I uh, I really wanted to say is how much I uh, appreciate the Wheel of Time community. I read the books and kind of enjoyed them on my own for many, many years. And I just recently started uh, interacting with the community more. And it, they're just full of so many wonderful people, um, and including this uh, this project and um, so I just want to say how much I appreciate what everybody did. And what I was wondering is what was the most difficult part about putting this whole video together? Yeah, great question. Uh, who wants to tackle that? Who wants to give us, yeah, what was the, what was the most difficult part? Um, from the perspective of the video editing, it was just the sheer number of people involved in this and making sure everything lined up. And I know I didn't quite, get it completely right in the end um there are a few bits if you're watching yourself very closely you might see your mouth moving out of time um but hopefully the overall effect is is good so it just um i suppose it was just quite a lot to make sure we had everybody in there um what the way i did it for example was i had to create those windows 
And then I would arrange everybody's videos, resize them, um, color correct them to make the colors a little bit more similar across the different videos, make sure they were lining up all at the right time. And then once I had them all positioned behind those windows, and I did wish, uh, like with the benefit of hindsight, I was like, oh, I really wish I'd told people to leave a certain amount of space around their heads because some people were like right up in the camera and some people <laughs> were way back here and I had to try and make them look fairly similar in the windows. Um, so I would get everybody lined up. Then I would make the, the windows disappear, render off the videos of everyone together. So I had one video for a section um, and then bring that in as a single video to sit behind the, the window so that uh, because if I tried to run too many videos at once, it would all grind to a halt and then I couldn't make anything line up. Uh, so that, that was probably the most difficult bit, which was a bit of an equipment limitation. Um, I, in terms of the sound mixing, though, I'm just so grateful Alex came on board because he really knows what he's doing. And the sound, when we got it all together, was this incredibly like coherent structure um, that was very well balanced. And uh, early on, he actually had a, we had a conversation and he had like this really detailed list of instructions to give people on exactly like what decibels to record at and everything. I'm like, oh, it might be a bit advanced for most people. Like if you, you could give that to certain musicians we have, but for most people, I reckon they're just recording on their iPhones. Um, so he had to do a lot of balancing everything in, um, post-production. Uh, so I suspect that was quite a challenge. Yeah. I, I mean, speak to that, uh, uh, Alex, what was the kind of biggest challenge for you? Uh, it's my job. No biggie. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> um, it wasn't, well, it was kind of what, what I do. So it's kind of like, um, yeah. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> I think that I don't know the, the the thing I'm very proud of this is every everyone who submitted something, um, everything was used. There, there wasn't anything we had to take out. Um, thankfully, apart from like silence at the beginning and end of the audio they sent or whatever. But but yeah, so everything anyone submitted for this was used all the way through. That's awesome. Jojo, I'm kind of curious, like how long did it take you, obviously you studied uh, sign language, but how long did it take you to come up with the, the your, your performance, if you will, of this song? Um, so my in translation or interpretation took a couple of different steps. Uh, overall, it, it took a couple of hours to put together um, between just the, the um, song portion and then the rap portion. Uh, they were recorded on two separate videos. Um, and so first I had to um, figure out exactly how I was going to translate line by line. Um, and then I had to like practice it enough that I could just do it from memory and wasn't like looking off of the lyrics. Um, Cause that was, would be a, very difficult to make sure I was in camera and sign and look at the lyrics at the same time. Um, so yeah, that took a couple of hours and there were some things that needed more creative work than other things. Like we said before the, um, like the term Amarlin, how do you show who the Amarlin is? Um, one thing that I couldn't get around was, uh, having to talk about the seals and I had to sort of break that down and think, at first I thought, oh, I'm going to describe what the seals are. Well, it's going to take a little while. Um, so I had to try to make something where if a wheel time fan who knows ASL looks at this, they're, they're going to know what I'm talking about. Mm. Yeah. And what, what did you end up doing for seals? Like, uh, what was I ended up sort of showing it. Like I went disc and traced the line that goes through the disc to show. You know, gotcha. <laughs> that was good yeah i saw i saw someone in uh i think i saw someone in chat say that they very much approved of <laughs> of the work you did <laughs> thank you <laughs> so, well joel thank you very much for calling in i'm kind of curious 
What have you, Joel, what have you thought about the soundtrack itself uh, for The Wheel of Time, the different volumes and such that Lauren and his team have put out there uh, as compared to maybe some of the other kind of fantasy shows you've watched? I, I love it. You know, watching the show, it, it just adds so much to the show. And uh, it, it, it makes me so emotional in a lot of it. Um, so I just appreciate everything it is. And it just works so well with the show. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think it's so unique and that's what I was I was kind of hoping it would have like a unique sound that didn't feel like another fantasy show that I'd seen before so I thought he did a great job well Joel thank you very much for calling in appreciate it uh, yeah, rightfully so uh, yeah thank you so much to our guests the work that you did here and I saw this comment made uh, Alex and Maurice and y'all are being too, too modest uh, of all of the kind of work that you did to kind of put all of these pieces together from, from everyone so Joel have a good one man we'll talk to you soon okay Thanks a lot, and thanks for putting this together. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. So I have a poll going while you were all talking. I had to throw a poll out to everybody. Uh, what do you think of the course of time? The options are bloody incredible or flaming brilliant. So flaming brilliant, by the way, is winning this poll. Um, so for those of you that are watching. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I am kind of curious as we step back a little bit from the work you did and just kind of speak to the music of The Wheel of Time uh, you know, Maurice, what's been your thoughts so far? Why is it connected with you? Because it clearly has. Um, so I, I love music. I did a lot of music when I was at school. Um, I played cello right through high school and then went off and did other things and haven't really got to do as much music stuff. So this was super exciting to do um, and actually do a creative project again uh, with a whole bunch of other people and have so much energy around that. So I really liked it. I've been listening to all four of the soundtrack albums pretty much nonstop at work. Uh, I really, really love the Bonded song. I can't remember what the old tongue name for it is. The one they play um, around shot. Stefan going up and putting, what is it? Wabshaw. Yeah, Wabshaw. Um where he puts the ring in the, the molten circle and it's just so beautiful. I love that kind of bittersweet. It reminds me a bit of in the fellowship of the ring, the music they play when they go in the mines of Moria. Um, and it's that beautiful sort of like lovely and ancient and sad kind of all at once. Oh, that's my favorite song on the soundtrack. Um, but I, been really immersed listening to it all and I found one of the things I've really enjoyed is going off and discovering some of the artists that sing on the soundtrack like I didn't know about our native daughters until I found them through looking at who was singing on this soundtrack and then listening to some of their work um so that's all been really fun part of this as well yeah no it's uh, uh I think one of mine is uh, Mash Mashiara and it almost has I don't know, like it almost has like an 80s vibe to it. <laughs> there's something about like, uh, uh, and I just, I love that. Uh, I mean, there's, Alex probably could explain all the different pieces that went into why I love that song. Uh, but that's all, I don't know, my brain just translates it all to like, this is like the third age, 80s and the third age uh, for me. Um, so yeah, I love Mashiara. Um, for you, uh, Alex, you, you know, maybe speak to that kind of obviously, uh, you know, you, you posted some of your own, you know, your own work, your own uh, translations, if you will, of the music. Um, uh, what has this meant to you, I guess, uh, Lauren's work and the team? And is there, you know, one piece of work that stands out to you? And like, why is this uh, such an important thing for you? Um, well, the thing that, that makes this soundtrack so interesting is essentially it's like a progressive folk rock album. Um, it's a bit unexpected, but... Um, it really captures the the theme of the books of you know the the secrets in the name it's a wheel of time it's both really modern and also using elements from the past as well um you know i i never would have imagined like the theme for rand and Egwene to having like dive bombing guitars and stuff like that <laughs> but it works really well and there's um this mesh of of so many different instruments from a bunch of uh, cultures um it's just really it's done really well <laughs> i love uh progressive rock folk 
folk album, album. I, that's not something again <laughs> like, I don't I don't hear all those things but I'm glad that you and others do because I, I I can see that yeah there's something about it that doesn't feel too modern to me but it does make some calls to some modernity in some way like it it feels like I, I can understand it but there's also so many other pieces so I love that like you're saying that the wheel aspect of it totally comes through for me uh, Jojo I obviously I know the part you took part of was the sign language but Music, has that been instrumental in your life in some way where you want to jump into this project? Um, you know, has it been meaningful to you? Um, I have grown up in a pretty somewhat musical household. We all sing all the time, but very rarely on key. Um, <laughs> and so music has been a part of my life for a while. Um, but I think actually when I started learning sign language, it got me more interested in music because it makes you really think more about uh, about the lyrics and not not only that but how can i show the like the way that the music is affecting me and how it sounds not just what the lyrics say yeah. um because sometimes the lyrics could say one thing but the song is making you think something completely different that's very yeah i, I didn't even think about that as part of the challenge of what you're doing uh, that's very cool by the way i totally get that the singing on, uh, on key part I, I don't get that very done very well but i love do love music uh, my parents were singers i grew up around stages and so I, I very much appreciate music more so than i'm very capable of singing it in most days so uh, i did see this question come in from shane I can't remember if you gave us an answer on this, so I'll ask you, Alex. Uh, were the videos recorded separately from the audio, or did you get them both together and then you split them? For, for who was that question? Sorry. Uh, Shane asked that question. He was just wondering if the, did you just get the videos yeah. and audios as a single file and you split them up and then kind of mixed them that way? E yeah, so, so I think we can show that a bit in okay. one of the folders I sent you. Um, in the audio folders, there's a vocals before and after. So look for that one. Um, you can kind of see the. Uh, is it yeah. what, is it one of the images or is it one of the audio files? The, the audio files. Um, the audio files. Okay. Vox before and Vox after, which is kind of the. Gotcha. Let me find that everybody. Yeah. Okay, so I have Vox before, Vox after. So yeah, let me play this. I'll play Vox before. Yeah. So so these are these are all the vocals I received without any um, effect on them. Without Sorry. Sorry, go ahead and explain that, and then I'll play it. <laughs> yeah, so um, these are all the vocals I received um, without any um, editing done to them, without any effects added to them, just as I receive them. And this is just, this is all of them together? Okay, let's play a little bit yeah. of that piece here. You just kind of already heard a little bit. And then Vox After, what's Vox After going to be? Um, that's the essentially the final product without the instrumentals, just the vocals. Gotcha. Okay, so let's play a little bit of that too. Here's... Uh... The party. so cool <laughs> so cool to like hear that before and after i love that yeah i there was That's, this image oh sorry go ahead i was just gonna say there was a step before that too so i would get links everyone sent me links to their youtube videos um and i would go there i would rip those videos and then i would take out the audio and send it to alex except some people sent stuff through dropbox um or direct audio to alex but most of the vocalists sent it as YouTube videos. Gotcha. What, what is this image, Alex? Uh, I'm probably just, just not as familiar. What are people seeing in this image right here? I can't see the screen. It's frozen. What's the oh, name gotcha. of it? Oh, gotcha. It's uh, it, this is the image. Um, this is um, mastering example. So is this just like, oh, yeah. all so... the tuning that you did? So yeah, this is just mastering for specifically for YouTube. There's a the, each website, whether it's Spotify or YouTube or 
Apple Music has its own way of processing audio. So, um, oh wow, kind of to 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 stop people from um, to get their video noticed or to get their music noticed, um, stopping them just making it as loud as possible, <laughs> just to get um, to make it sound impressive. They they kind of average the audio. So that's the processing I did in terms of um, mastering it for YouTube. Gotcha. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that is. I will a... just say there was yeah. a slightly better mastered audio. Apparently, when what had happened was I uploaded a version that Alex had mastered, and I'd done all the all the uh, what do you call them? The captions. Done all the captions on it all the way through, and then I realized I'd spelled a couple of people's handles wrong in the credits. And I was like, oh, damn. So I had to do it all again. And when I did that, somehow my process of uploading from Final Cut took the audio, I think, down by a couple of notches. Um, so the original audio was slightly louder, uh, but otherwise in time. Um, but by this stage, I was on the road and I'm like, <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't do the whole thing again. <laughs> so I, uh, we've, it's, the original version was just slightly better in terms of its audio mix. Yeah, gotcha. you, you can see it on YouTube. If you click on, if anyone in the chat wants to do this as an experiment, just click on whatever first video you see on your suggested, and then you right click the video and you uh, click the option that says stats for nerds. And it will tell you under the, the bit that says volume normalized, it will say like plus or minus a certain amount of db and that's the mastering for it the interesting okay i have fact. never <laughs> fact, fact for nerds i love it <laughs> now i need to go check that out afterwards by the way this poll uh, about 200 of you voted what do you think uh, of this course of time flaming brilliant did win 52 percent of the vote just kind of curious uh, if you were curious uh so i i i know we i know everyone here in chat that sees this i'm sure lauren uh when he sees this will will want more I know that's the, the comment I'm, I'm seeing. So uh, as far as the next song that you, if you were to take part in this, Maurice, again, what is the next song you would, I mean, we can poll everybody here in chat and ask them like, what song would they like to do? So what are the like four of the options? I want to get the four options from you all and then we can poll everybody and maybe they can help guide us to what the next song could be if fans wanted to participate. I think, Weep for Manetherin should be in there because that's very popular with a lot of people and it's very singable. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what others you guys reckon. I know Mashiara is one of my favorites, so I feel like that has to be in there. Aldival, do you, I mean, which one's the Trollocs one? Uh, Modero. 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 <laughs> is it just M O D E R O? Is that M O R D R O? Sheen. Oh, M O R D R D E R O. Yeah. Sheen. Great. Now I got to look this up. <laughs> so I don't want to like, <laughs> now I'm like, I don't want to like yeah. misspell this all the way. So, um, so is there another, okay. So Modero Sheen and is there a fourth one that we should put in here? Jojo, do you have an idea of one that, uh, you think would be good? I'm not sure. I'm still caught on that idea with the wheat from an etheran. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> okay, Mordero. Okay, I have, I have a wheat from an etheran, Mashiara, Mordero Sheen. Throw out one more that would be fun to do. Um, I always thought either Mashi Thamel or Kaisen Shah would be cool because there's a lot of vocals in there we could add in. Mashi Thamel. Okay, yeah, I see that one. Um, yeah. I'll grab it's this Mashi you... Was that one where when they did the translation, it was kind of about, I thought they were saying Egwene and Rand's souls were like uh, divided and balancing each other or something along those lines. Does anyone else recall seeing something about this? Was the young yeah. love one? I'm not yep. sure, but yes. I, I don't remember the line itself, but yeah, this is the young love one. Oh, by the way, I'm yeah. going to throw these up here. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Alex. You want to say what's something before, before we you the post poll? the poll? Okay, before, before uh, the poll. Um, I, I sent something in the 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 Twitter chat, just okay. something to um, maybe skew the results. 
ever so slightly. <laughs> okay, let me, uh, let me, uh, let me, is that the someone... link you sent for a Google Drive? Is that the Google Drive link? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you're Someone I see may what you're... have I see what you're doing here. Uh, shown the interest in maybe singing this song, which, you, <laughs> which might be a cool addition. Okay, so um, this is what this is what Alex wants to show you before you vote on this poll. Uh, he wants to show you that uh, that Geekieri said no. He wants to show you that I wrote that I wrote. This is one I might take a shot at singing if that were to happen. I couldn't love this one more, and this one is Mashiara. So, um, uh, <laughs> I think what Alex is saying is there could be a chance that I would take part if you chose Mashiara. That's what he's saying. <laughs> it's 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 a one hundred percent chance. <laughs> so what? Look, uh, I would, I would, I would do it. I would take part if you all picked Mashiara. So with that being said, although hold on, before I do that, all three of you would take part also, right? I'll take part if all three of you would take part in Mashiara. Okay, okay. Here we go. Which song? Should I'll the... score out some parts too. <laughs> okay. Should the chorus of time do next? Those are your four options. This is gonna be tough. I know Weep from Anethrin is going to be... Uh, so for those of you in chat, you're helping us pick right now, or helping fans pick, which song you would like the Chorus of Time to tackle next. So while everyone votes, for those of you that, that have missed this somehow, why don't we... Um, I think we should play this one more time for everybody. Come back, get final thoughts about the season, and we'll end this vote. Uh, but you have five minutes as you watch. So enjoy one more playing. Again... Uh, just so my guests know, um, yeah, just go ahead and mute yourselves and I will, uh, I'll play this for fans one more time. So enjoy the course of time to Al Nato. Here you go.
was awesome. You guys, it's crazy. The work you put in is amazing. Again, just love watching uh, comments as this is happening. By the way, for those of you that are hoping for an interpretive dance or for me singing <laughs> acapella for Mashiara, you're losing out. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't do the interpretive dance side of it either. anyways, but Weep from Netherin is winning this poll for those that are, uh, those that are watching here. Weep from Netherin has 58%. I'm not surprised. It was like a really, really um, popular kind of part of the episodes. So maybe this is a good opportunity as we're kind of wrapping this up for this evening. I want to talk about season one and maybe Weep from Netherin. Was that one of your favorite pieces or favorite moments of the show, Jojo, for this season? I definitely like that one. Um, I really, uh, I'm a big Lenu fan. So I really liked the last couple of episodes. Um, I liked that we got Lan saying his actual quotes for the book. That made me really happy. Yeah, that's a, uh, I know it, it, what's funny is that's one of those where you're like, it's only sped up a very little bit, you know, <laughs> like from a timing standpoint, we look at the books. Um, so, but yes, I know a lot of people were excited about that. Maybe for you, Alex, were there some favorite moments from season one that kind of still stick out to you here? Um, I think same as the books, my favorite moments, uh, within the wheel of time are seeing these characters develop within these really, um, like complicated, uh, situations with, um, like the scenes with Nynaeve, Egwene, Elaine, and Avienda just sit sitting in a room coming up with a plan of what to do next, um, talking over things. Those are my favorite bits in the book. And like episode six felt very similar to that, where we saw a lot of the sort of political machinations, the development of a lot of the relations relationships between characters, I think, that's definitely my favorite bit of the show so far. Yeah, I think that's one of the ones, uh, even, and I've mentioned this a couple of times, even the people that maybe did not appreciate season one, uh, the acting, uh, I think, has been one of the kind of standouts for everyone. Um, and I think that, like you're saying, the relationships between the actors, uh, that's really worked for me. Uh, you know, actually seeing relationships that are believable, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like I, like I watch it and I go, yeah, that seems like a real relationship. And that's, I can understand that. Whereas sometimes I think I would read the books and be like, I don't know, I think I'm missing some stuff here, but uh, I'll accept it. Uh, Maurice, for you, what are some standout moments from season one? Uh, probably, I really, really love the interpretation of Lan's character. I think he has so much more layers um, that Daniel Henney brought into it. Um, I really liked Rand's arc over the book and it was uh, over the season. And it was funny because I sort of had the same reaction I'd had when I was reading the books, which is I sort of got more and more frustrated with him. But then by the end, I was like, oh, I really liked how they did that. Like that all worked together. There was a plan there and it sort of all came together. Um, so I like those things, but I also just liked seeing, um, like things we didn't get to see in the books. The fact we had all the, like episode four is my favorite episode by far. Just getting to see all that was amazing. Yeah, I, that, I think it was some of those moments. Again, uh, we don't, there's so many things that do not actually happen in the books that way, but stuff I really loved. Like I, I loved the, the town uh, what is it, Bray and Spring, and I loved the use of the Grinwells, how the Grinwell piece happens with the Fade and Tom and Matt and Rand. I thought that that really works, the way they kind of just consolidated down and adapted that in. That's some of my favorite. Again, I go back to episode three all the time. It just uh, episode three speaks to me. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I know it's not everyone's favorite, but it just is one of those I just love uh, so much. Looking forward to season two without kind of spoiling too much beyond the great hunt. For those of you who are watching, we haven't spoiled anything from the books yet. Um, but are there any kind of theories or hopes of something coming that you're looking forward to in season two? And for those of you that might be out there, they're like, oh, cool. They didn't spoil anything. I will throw a little banner up just to remind you, like the last couple minutes of the show might have some spoilers when it comes to the first two books. Let's try to keep it to the first two books, if you will. And, uh, but yeah, any kind of th either theories or hopes uh, for what we might see in season two? 
Anyone want to jump first? Yeah, Jojo, you have something? Uh, I'm excited to see the way that they characterize the the Sean Chen. Um, and I'm excited to see Egwene's arc as it's as she interacts with the Sean Chen. And um, I always felt like that was Egwene's like first turning point to understanding like, oh, this adventure might have consequences. And th yeah, there might be point. danger. Yeah. 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 That's a, I hadn't thought about it that, specifically that way. Obviously just uh, things happen, but that's obviously the, one of the most momentous things that takes place um, or terrifying or terrible things that happens to her. Um, so uh, Alex, for you from the great hunt, is there something you're looking forward to from a scene perspective or just an experience perspective in season two of the show? Um, uh, well, well, again, just it's seeing a lot of these characters going through um, so many things and then uh, being put in a bunch of really complicated situations that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, the, the White Tower training, obviously, um, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, that, I think that's one of the ones actually getting some training uh, I hope they get back to the White Tower and we see some of that be nice uh, it's one of the things maybe from the show where I was like okay I, I want to see the training make a difference in what they're able to do uh, so yeah I'm looking forward to that piece and finally to you Maurice before we end this, uh, this evening yeah something just season two wise from the great hunt that you're looking forward to uh, I would I'm interested to see if they keep going with making the Forsaken and the White Cloaks more competent. They feel more competent in the show than they are in the book. So I'm interested to see how we'll see Land Fear, we'll see the Forsaken come out of that cracked seal, maybe, I'm hoping. Um, so, yeah, interested to see that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I can't wait to see Land Fear. Uh, let me... Uh... Let me end this poll. About 200 of you voted on this poll. Um, this one it looks like, obviously, Weep from Benetherin is the answer that, um, that we're getting on this poll. Uh, so let me end this. 62% Weep from Benetherin is what fans here would love to see a chorus of time of fans tackle next. So that's a great option here. I will throw one final poll in as we end, you know, uh, who do you look forward to meeting in season two? I'll throw in some options here. And, and uh, we'll end for the evening. There you go. Okay, so um, while people answer that poll, I just want to thank you all for being here again, for doing this work. Thank you for allowing us to premiere this uh, for fans. Uh, like I said, we'll add the link to the, the actual work, uh, uh, the one that actually is the YouTube uh, version of this that's just what you saw here and not having to force everybody to come back and try to find it in this live video. So we'll make sure you get that out there on social media. Please do share that link with fans. Let them know to come appreciate the kind of creativity of their fellow geeks. Um, you know, this was uh, ridiculously awesome. I loved it. And final note to Shane here. Thanks for the tip. Shane said, I think I'd rather see Matt try the interpretive dance, to be honest. It's not going to happen, man. Sorry, Shane. <laughs> don't, don't count on seeing the interpretive dance. Uh, but yes, thank you very much for letting me do that. Thank you to all who took part in this amazing course of time. Look forward to seeing some of the reactions afterwards on social media, what fans thought there. And like I said, we will not be back here next week on Wednesday. We rarely take a Wednesday off. But I will be officiating my son's wedding next week. So, like I said, well, you'll, we'll just see us back here in about two Wednesdays, and we'll get you know we'll get the party for 2022 started here at uh, when it comes to Dusty Wheel, you know, the theory party, talking land fear and the rest. You know, I know everyone's anxious, just like I am, to talk about land fear. My options for the poll, by the way, were who do you look forward to meeting in season two, land fear, Celine, or Mirren? <laughs> Those were your options, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, 47% are looking forward to see Landfair. So uh, that's winning this poll. Thanks everybody for being here. Really appreciate it. Uh, and afterwards, there is an after show in Discord. If you want to join uh, fans chatting about 
uh, what they just saw tonight or continuing the discussion of season one and season two. You can find the link to our Discord channel in the description of this video. We are a kind of treat everyone with uh, kindness and respect kind of Discord channel. If that's not your gig, go find another Wheel of Time Discord channel, I guess. Uh, but yeah, but do join us over there if that sounds interesting from uh, an engagement standpoint with our fans. And uh, we jump into chat. We keep this conversation going. So, okay, that's it, everybody. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for kicking off 2022 here at the Dusty Wheel with the course of time. And as we sit around here, good night from the Dusty Wheel and smash to black. You went right to kill it. Look at you, you're all ready. You're just done. I mean, this is like, uh, this is one really of the well. Um, and now I'm like, great, my turn. <laughs> and if you don't like that, um, you want to say, well, Robert Jordan could have made the two rivers all white. He could have, but he gosh. didn't. So okay. Just complimented me so, on my dress, and as you can clearly see, I'm sad. I just need to call me as something along the lines of a Shida Haran analog. For the it does make sense why it outlasted the breaking. Yeah. <laughs> See, you know, this is why I have Therese in the show because she's gonna correct everything that. Hey everybody, I'm wrong welcome about to the Dusty Wheel Show. What? Meme off challenge. Yay! Therese's like baby face mounted on like a huge body. So like all <laughs> of a sudden. This is not other. just <laughs> like, a traditional why? fantasy, right? There, there are sci-fi. And elements just a moment ago, kind of uh, Rafe tweeted something. So let me get my guests in here with me, he and probably let's, I would let's say get, let's put in. 70, 80% of the work. I got to be over the shoulder and be like, no.